The final item of business today is the Member's Business Debate on Motion Number 12446 in the name of Mark Macdonald on Making Scotland Autism Friendly. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I would be grateful if those members who wish to speak in the debate could press the request to speak buttons now. I call on Mark Macdonald to open the debate. Seven minutes or so, Mr Macdonald. Uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Can I begin by thanking those members from across the Chamber uh, who signed the motion uh, which we are uh, debating this evening and can I uh, welcome our guests from the National Autistic Society Scotland and Autism Initiatives who are in the gallery uh, and I'm aware that there are a number of of people who will be watching this debate uh, via the live streaming uh, function. Uh, earlier today, presiding officer, I attended a uh, short ceremony to hand over uh, this plaque to the Scottish Parliament. Uh, it is the Autism Access Award, which is awarded to organisations uh, who have uh, taken steps to make themselves accessible to individuals on the autistic spectrum. Uh, the Scottish Parliament is the first public building in Scotland to achieve this award. I think it's a great testimony to the efforts of the staff of the Parliament uh, who have done that. Um, and it was great to be there and to meet some of the Parliament's autism champions. And I'm aware that there will be work being uh, undertaken uh, throughout the Parliament to increase awareness and understanding of autism amongst uh, members of staff in the Parliament. So uh, I think it's a great credit to them. Uh, tomorrow, presiding officer, is World Autism Awareness Day. And um, I think it's important during what is World Autism Awareness Week, we take the opportunity to both highlight good work that is being done and celebrate that, but also to outline our aspirations and our goals to go further and to do better in the areas that we want to see improvement in. And the motion is framed in such a way uh, <clears throat> that we want to set uh, an ambitious target uh, for Scotland. Um, but let's look at some of the, the good work that's being done at present. We see the Autism Toolbox being rolled out as a resource to be used in our schools, and I'm aware that that is being uh, welcomed both by parents and by teachers across Scotland. We have seen uh, a number of relaxed performances in our theatres and cinemas, which have opened up cultural experiences to people who for too many years found themselves excluded from being able to enjoy things as uh, that those of us would take for granted uh, uh, as basic as, for example, the Christmas pantomime. Um, and we've seen uh, the production of local autism strategies across Scotland within the wider framework uh, of the Scottish strategy for autism. Uh, I think we would all accept that some local authorities took that forward a little bit quicker than others did, but there has nonetheless been progress made across Scotland, and it is worth recognising that. Now, on Friday, uh, presiding officer, on the first day of World Autism Awareness Week, I uh, was able to attend uh, part of the uh, conference that took place, the National Autistic Society conference that took place uh, in Aberdeen. Um, and at that event, the uh, National Autistic Society Scotland launched the, um, their campaign for uh, autism-friendly Aberdeen and uh, their bid to try and get Aberdeen to become the first city in the UK to be recognised as autism friendly. Now that's going to involve a range uh, of uh, a range of work being done across both the public and the private sector uh, in order to increase awareness and understanding, in order to make services more receptive uh, and more uh, open for people uh, on the autistic spectrum, and also uh, it will deliver wider benefits beyond that. I think there are areas where we need to, we need to look at where the challenges are arising in order that we can achieve that outcome and where there is still work to be done. If we look, for example, in the area of diagnosis, uh, I know from personal experience that getting early diagnosis um, is something that we're seeing some improvements in, both in terms of my own experiences with my son, but also in terms of the experiences of other parents who I've come into contact with. But uh, I think that when we look at uh, diagnosis for uh, older children, particularly into the teenage years, and also crucially for adults, uh, I think that we still are seeing some difficulties in an ability to obtain a diagnosis and also the length of time that it takes to diagnose. And there are still too many people, 27% uh, in 2013, to, uh, who said uh, that they felt they had been misdiagnosed uh, initially. So we have to uh, look at how we can get better in terms of diagnosis because when, uh, when asked as part in 2013 as part of the Count us in report that the National Autistic Society produced, 61% of the respondents said that they felt relief once they had 
been given a diagnosis, because a diagnosis, uh, uh, presiding officer, can open up the opportunities to access support uh, that is obviously not available without a diagnosis. However, uh, I'll come back uh, to that perhaps a little bit later on as well uh, in terms of other things that, that need to be done. In terms of employment and employability, um, we've, I've heard testimony from individuals who have found themselves excluded uh, from the, the jobs market as a consequence of uh, their autism, when in fact uh, subtle changes to the workplace or indeed a recognition of the strengths and talents of individuals on the autistic spectrum would allow employers the opportunity to gain members of staff who would uh, vastly uh, contribute to, the, to, to their workforce uh, and to their business. There are some employers who I think are very good uh, in terms of offering employment opportunities to individuals uh, with, uh, with disabilities in general. Um, I do feel, however, that there is more that employers could look to do to support individuals on the autistic spectrum into employment. And the final area which I've uh, seen during the course uh, of, of my campaign work and also through the testimonies that I've received is around the transitions that take place where an individual goes from children being responsibility of children's services to adult services, from adult services to older people's services. Often it is felt uh, and there is a perception that the view of many organisations is that autism is something that affects children. Uh, we need to break down some of those perceptions and make uh, organisations understand that the support that an individual requires in childhood, while not necessarily needing to be absolutely mirrored, cannot simply uh, be radically altered at the point at which they move to being the responsibility of adult services and making sure that there is a clear path for that individual as they move through the different, uh, the different age uh, age brackets in terms of how social care services uh, address their needs. But there are wider benefits that can be recognised, presiding officer, as a result of Scotland becoming more autism friendly. A recognition uh, and understanding uh, of um, sensory issues will benefit those who are not necessarily on the autistic spectrum but perhaps have associated conditions. Um, one uh, group who have come to me uh, today on my Facebook page actually are individuals who have uh, children uh, or relatives who have been diagnosed with what is called pathological demand avoidance, which is associated with autistic spectrum disorder but doesn't always get the support that perhaps they feel it deserves. Um, minor adjustments, presiding officer, can lead to major differences and major, uh, uh, and major benefits. And I think that's something that needs to be emphasised to employers, to uh, private sector organisations, to public sector bodies, that we're not talking about them needing to make drastic changes to the way that they deliver services or the way that they, uh, are, uh, the, the way they operate in relation to customer services. Often it's very minor adjustments, but they make a major difference to the individual uh, who is affected. And thirdly, in terms of uh, getting more people on the autistic spectrum into employment and sustaining that employment, will have great benefits to the wider economy through the increase in productivity and increase in employment. Is it going to be challenging for us to get there? Yes. Is it going to be unachievable? I see no reason why that should be the case. If we have the will, then we can get there. And I hope that the Scottish Government will be on board with this ambitious campaign to make Scotland an autism-friendly nation. Many thanks. Uh, I know the presiding officer was delighted to receive on behalf of the Parliament this afternoon the Autism Access Award that Mr Macdonald refers to. And I'm also pleased to put on the record that this is a great tribute to all of the Scottish Parliament staff who have worked so hard to make this possible. Thank you. We now turn to the open debate. Speeches of four minutes or so, please. And I call Malcolm Chisholm to be followed by Graham Day. Presiding officer, can I congratulate Mark Macdonald on bringing Autism Awareness Week into the chamber again and his dedication in helping to raise awareness of this important issue. Can I also apologise to him and the minister because um, we all on this side actually thought this debate was uh, tomorrow, so I'm supposed to be somewhere else. And in fact, the second Labour speaker is not here for that reason as well. When you visit the National Autistic Society Scotland's website, you see as a header the slogan, accept difference, not indifference. I think that this is a principle that should also underpin an autism friendly nation and in fact we should celebrate difference in this week of events. The theme of this year's uh, event is Stand Out for Autism, which I think reflects the need to encourage personal pride and self-belief and a sense that we all stand out in our own way. In Awareness Week 2015, the National Autistic Society wants us to stand out together. 
In a similar debate last year, we discussed the importance of ensuring that individuals with autism do not feel cut off from the mainstream of everyday activity. As the National Autistic Science point out, autism is a spectrum condition that means that while some of the barriers faced by individuals may be the same, the condition will affect them in different ways and many are able to live relatively independent lives. A former intern in my office, David Nicholson, has gone on to become a supporter of the National Autistic Society and is a former youth patron for Ambitious About Autism. Last week, he gave me his thoughts about the need for Scotland to become a truly autism-friendly nation. He said, Autistic people have the talent and potential to do very well in society. They want to contribute positively to Scottish life, the Scottish Parliament, the Scottish Government and others must do all they can to help support those on the spectrum reach their fullest potential. There is still a long way to go before Scotland is an autism-friendly nation. We need to work together to ensure that people on the spectrum get the chance to show what they can do in the workplace. Too few have that opportunity and too much talent is going to waste, which is a tragedy. We also need to ensure that our education system can be as autism-friendly as possible too. That means learning from what other countries are doing and making sure that each school is autism friendly by holding autism awareness events for staff and pupils. It is essential that all school staff have autism training. Uh, David Wood, I'm sure, like Mark MacDonald, have welcomed the introduction of autism toolboxes to Scottish schools in 2009 and their continued updating as new resources become available. He's correct in saying that training should be available to all teachers to recognise autism and help provide the right support. There's much more that could be said about education, but I want to move on to employment because the theme of Autism Awareness Week this year is employment. And I'm glad to see a number of organisations in Scotland with specific focus in this area. Autism Scotland has a thriving network of outreach support services across central Scotland. Those individuals receiving support have an agreed number of hours of provision per week, ranging from two hours to 26 hours. It is estimated that only 15% of autistic adults in the UK are in full-time employment. I'm sure we all agree that that is far too little, especially when we acknowledge how much talent they can bring and offer to a professional environment. Research suggests that people on the autistic spectrum have many exceptional capabilities, some of which are a real necessity in a professional environment, for, ex for instance, legal, logical reasoning and a greater attention to detail. What is striking here is the lack of support and opportunity to match their ambitions. Autistic people should be able to live the life they choose. Central to successful and sustainable employment for autistic people is the ability of employers to harness their unique skills instead of employing them in spite of this uh, disorder. Presiding officer, the motion also mentions the Autism Access Awards given the National by the National Autistic Society. And rightly so, as this award recognises buildings and facilities which have made an effort to ensure that they can be categorised as autism friendly. They set the standard for accessibility, and of course making something accessible doesn't always mean making physical changes. As the National Autistic Society points out, it is as much about changing the approach of staff as it is changing the layout. In conclusion, uh, Autism Awareness Week draws our attention to the fact that a huge number of people, both in Scotland and the rest of the UK, are on the spectrum, and that this spectrum means there are huge differences between each individual. Each autistic person, like anyone not on the spectrum, is unique and has unique aspirations, strengths and, and needs. What all of these people have in common is that they want and deserve a chance to be treated as equal with equal rights to the basic daily choices that you and I enjoy. They are young people with a hunger to learn and flourish in our schools. They are graduates looking for support into the workplace that will give them the chance to contribute that they so desire. They are teenagers looking to drive for the first time but in need of extra advice. Each deserves an equal footing from which to take first steps. Therefore, this week, let us not only accept difference but celebrate it because a diverse employment market demands difference, diversity and a recognition that we all have a positive contribution to make. I support the motion. Thank you very much. And I now call Graham Day to be followed by Nanette Mill. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I begin by congratulating Mark Macdonald on securing this opportunity to highlight World Autism Awareness Week? And I say that not simply because it's protocol to do so, but uh, because over the past few weeks it's really come home to me just how far as a society and in terms of providing appropriate support services, 
We have to go until we can really say that we are responding, as we ought to, the needs of autistic children and adults. Progress has been made, but a string of recent constituent cases and attending a constituency event last week have very much brought home to me just how far we have to go before we can claim to have created that genuinely autism-friendly environment. Angus Council is coming to the end of a process aimed at assuring the provision for adults and children with autism within the education service links into the national autism strategy and, just as importantly, meets the needs of those requiring support be the carers or the cared for. The delay in delivering this was caused by the Council feeling that a consultation and mapping exercise carried out on behalf of the Scottish Government in 2013 had not been as wide-reaching as would have been required to ensure what was to be delivered fitted with what was needed on the ground. The Council wrote out to 211 families in the county who are identified as having children with autism, asking them in the first instance to complete a questionnaire to help provide a foundation for creating that autism strategy which meets the aspirations of those at the sharp end. Subsequent to that, parental engagement events were held in Montrose for Frank Arnoustie to present the findings of the survey and to flesh those out. I attended one of those engagement sessions just last week. and What, what I heard left me concerned that as things stand, and as officials acknowledged in relation to education, the needs of these children are not yet being fully met. However, if the Council, as I believe it will, really takes on board the input from parents, then over the short to medium term, then we will make significant progress. The whole consultation process has identified eight key areas for improvement. And whilst this process was peculiar to Angus, the themes will, I am sure, be common to other parts of the country. These were the need to improve knowledge and understanding of autism, reaching out to the wider community to ensure they are more clued up on the subject, improving the process of diagnosis and appropriate support immediately post-diagnosis. Support for those with autism and their families to access recreational facilities delivered locally. Improved information sharing between agencies, getting services talking to each other. Planning for tra transitions right through into adult life with a particular need highlighted in terms of post-school support. Improved learning opportunities and, as Mark MacDonald touched upon, purposeful occupational opportunities for adults. And finally, supporting adults to live as independently as they can within mainstream tenancies. Within a few months, a strategy covering the complete educational journey from entering nursery through to adulthood will be presented to community planning partnership for approval and moves are already afoot to secure parental involvement in overseeing delivery and future policy development. The challenge, of course, is how to meet all reasonable needs when those needs and the expectations and views of parents and guardians can be quite varied. And even if we succeed in creating genuinely autism-friendly education mm -hmm. establishments, then how do we ensure other agencies with whom people with autism come into contact, with such as the police, health and social services, are properly equipped to respond to their needs? Well, the answer surely lies in the purpose of this week, raising awareness. How many of us, if we are honest, understand what is needed to create more autism friendly environments. Two stories told by parents at that engagement session last week really left their mark on me. One mum revealed that her son could not join in the swimming sessions at his school simply because the PE teacher kept order by blowing a whistle, which they couldn't cope with. Imagine being excluded from joining classmates in an enjoyable pursuit for the sake of a whistle. Another said that her child would be better able to cope in certain circumstances if the lights in the room weren't turned up quite so brightly. Imagine being denied the opportunity to just be one of the class for the sake of fitting or turning down a dimmer switch. How many other minor changes could we, as a society, reasonably make that would move forward the cause of inclusion? Presiding officer, it is to be hoped that whatever World Autism Awareness Week highlights to us, we each of us strive to respond to that. Thank you. Many thanks. And I now call Nanette Millen to be followed by Dennis Robertson. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I begin by adding my thanks to Mark MacDonald for lodging this motion? I'm obviously aware of his personal family interest in autism, but I'm equally aware of his commitment to the condition in general and raising awareness of it with the wider public. Almost a year ago to the day, we celebrated and commemorated the seventh annual World Autism Awareness Day. Now that it's coming to be an established date in the calendar, I think it is right that we continue to highlight its importance. I don't think it's necessary to go through the various statistics and facts relating to autism as we've done previously, although it is always worthwhile stating that one in a hundred of the population in the UK are on the autistic spectrum. It's a common condition which should not be hidden. In my brief contribution, I'd like to look at some of the very positive initiatives which are helping to make Scotland move towards being an autism-friendly nation, as stated in the motion. 
In a debate last year, we focused on relaxed cinema and theatre performances, which have made such a difference to people, especially children, in enjoying pursuits that most of us take for granted. I commend His Majesty's Theatre in my home city of Aberdeen for staging a relaxed showing of horrible histories last May. I'm sure all of us would like to see more productions of this nature, which provide sensory-friendly approaches to reach out to people with autism. Another initiative uh, I heard of recently, which took place, I think, last weekend, was by Toys R Us, which provided a dedicated day in which children could attend outlets across the UK in a relaxed environment. Fluorescent lighting was reduced, music wasn't overly loud, and no tannoy announcements were made, factors which can be very unsettling for children with autism. I hope to see other stop shops being similarly progressive in responding to the needs of these children. I pay tribute to the Scottish Government for funding it has provided to the One Stop Shop programme, not least for the 300,000 dedicated to the Advice and Information Centre at Queen's Gardens in Aberdeen. This valuable resource provides support for families and individuals in the North East affected by autism. It seeks to alleviate and dispel the myths often associated with it, and the almost embarrassment sometimes caused by the condition. As, as Wendy Minty, the National Autistic Manager, Society Manager in Aberdeen, put it, Many people with the condition and their families struggle to access the right support at the right time. Indeed, every region in Scotland is now covered by the One Stop Shop network. But as the National Autistic Society Scotland has pointed out, funding is limited and therefore local authorities need to start thinking about how they can contribute to these essential services. And I was very glad to hear from Mark Macdonald just now of the work <coughs> being embarked on in Aberdeen to make it an autism friendly city. The motion also refers to the autism toolbox for schools. Like many others, I think this type of resource contributes enormously to understanding why children on the spectrum need to be included in mainstream education. The toolbox website provides greater understanding to parents, staff and young people of the everyday challenges faced by young people with autism. And it's in our schools that basic knowledge of autism needs to be fostered so that children with it do not feel ostracised. Equally so, Parents with sons or daughters with autism require support so that they too do not feel that their children are different. The American writer Laura Ginsberg, in her seminal work regarding her son's right to education wrote, through the blur, I wondered if I was alone or if other parents felt the same way as I did, that everything involving our children was painful in some way. And, presiding officer, beyond school days, as the motion suggests, with appropriate understanding of the condition, many more employers will come to realise the benefits of employing people with autism, as I have in my region, particularly those at the higher end of the spectrum, for instance with Asperger's, who have proved in many locations to be extremely effective and very conscientious employees. As an example, many office jobs which some of us might find tedious and too repetitive are ideally suited to people with autism who like the detail and the accuracy which is required and take great pride in their work as well as de deriving immense satisfaction from it. And there are potential opportunities for people with autism in many professional and other spheres of, of employment where their commitment, logical thinking, enthusiasm and att attention to detail would be invaluable assets. We've come a long way in raising awareness of autism but as Mark MacDonald rightly says, that work is ongoing and his own unfailing efforts are contributing to, to this in no small measure. Thank you. Many thanks. And I now call Dennis Robertson to be followed by Liam MacArthur. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Presiding Officer. And like my fellow colleagues here in the Chamber, can I congratulate Mark MacDonald, not just for bringing this to uh, the Chamber this afternoon, but for being a champion for being an ambassador and for being someone who is raising the awareness, not just here in Parliament, but within his home city of Aberdeen. And I too would like to welcome the guests that are here this afternoon um, and those who are live streaming in this particular debate. Presiding officer, you are absolutely right to congratulate those who took part in actually achieving the accreditation in the Parliament. And I think, in particular, I'd probably like to commend uh, Anila McKenna, who is the uh, Equalities Manager within the Parliament. Anila, in her dedication, uh, looking across all aspects of disability, is a wonderful asset to this Parliament. And I think we should uh, congratulate all the people that took place, uh, that, that, 
that um, took part in ensuring we had this wonderful award. And as my colleague Mark MacDonald said, we are the first presiding officer, the first public building in Scotland to achieve this remarkable award. We should not be the last. And this parliament, I believe, is the foundation for others in Scotland to reach that achievement of being an artistic friendly nation. This parliament is showing the way. This parliament, as I've said, is the foundation and it should be an exemplar for others to follow. It means that people visiting here, presiding officer, can come with a degree of assurity, a surety that they will not meet the barriers that often they are met with. As Nanette Milne has said, even in visiting a, a supermarket or to visit somewhere to buy toys can be extremely upsetting and raise people's anxiety to a level that many of us cannot understand. Congratulate Toys R Us. But one day, one day out of 365 is not enough for our young people with autism to enjoy the experience of going and choosing or playing within that environment. There are organisations that are supporting people with autism. And in my own constituency of Aberdeenshire West, uh, the, the a Sensational, which is there, it's a charity, and it brings in people with all different disabilities. But there are many who are on the spectrum of autism. And they are there, and they have a sensory area that people can play but enjoy play, presiding officer. Enjoy play in the knowledge that they are not inhibited by perhaps loud noise or perhaps bright light because of their sensory or heightened sensory awareness. I was listening earlier on, presiding officer, to a wonderful animation film that has been designed by Understanding Autism. And I hadn't actually realised it was an animation film. And it was actually describing, in I think very calm detail, of the, the uh, surroundings and the environment that we all live in. From a young boy playing in the park with his mum, but who decided it was time to go home and showed his card with the drawing of a house to indicate he'd had enough, he wanted to go home. That was his way, his best way of actually showing that he'd had enough and wanted to go home. Or the young girl at school who was getting excited about the school dance that was coming up and her friend said, what are you wearing? In that excitement of going to a dance. And the young girl, Lisa, in this occasion, described my school uniform because she took the meaning of what are you wearing too literal but that is her world so we need to understand the world of people with autism and how we communicate and what our environment does in the way of creating barriers so we should not disable our, our people with autism we should embrace their needs and try to find out ways that we have actually found in this parliament to do so, to make it inclusive. Presiding officer, I think in conclusion, we, also, we, we, we have uh, ambitions for all people with disabilities. And we, as Malcolm Chisholm has said, is we need to acknowledge that we are all different. But that's not a failing. That is something that we should be proud of. Being different isn't, isn't something that we should hide behind. Being different makes us who we are. And being different is something I applaud. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Many thanks. I now call Liam MacArthur to be followed by Nigel Dawn. Uh, thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. And uh, on the eve of World Autism Awareness Day, uh, I too congratulate Mark MacDonald on bringing this debate. I know that uh, as a result of a football injury, uh, injury uh, Mr MacDonald is 
uh, rapidly gaining hopefully a temporary insight into issues of uh, physical uh, access. But I think on this issue, um, as others have commented, um, Mark Macdonald has shown a, a commitment and a dedication to the cause, not just within this parliament, but out with. And I would certainly uh, applaud him for those efforts. It's clearly uh, something that uh, the National Autistic Society of Scotland and Scottish Autism uh, are joined in uh, on behalf of those affected by autism. I think Nanette Milne uh, mentioned some of the figures, but it's not just the 58,000 or so people in Scotland with autism. Um, as the uh, National Autistic Society point out, uh, the families uh, affected by uh, autism as well uh, number up to around 230,000. It's a spectrum condition, which means that while all people with autism share three main areas of difficulty, their conditions will affect, affect them in very different uh, ways. Some people uh, are able to live relatively independent lives, while others may need a lifetime of specialist support. Uh, but whatever the level of need, uh, all deserve nothing less than to have those needs acknowledged uh, and met. And as Malcolm Chisholm reminded us, the theme of uh, Autism Awareness Day this year is employment. I think that's very fitting indeed. I think we can all uh, find examples in the communities that we represent uh, across Scotland of employers who are missing out on the abilities and the skills uh, that people with autism uh, can bring to the, the, the workplace. Uh, there is quite demonstrably a need to address the barriers to employment, including a shortage of vocational training, uh, inadequate support with job pl placement, and sadly, uh, all too pervasive discrimination. Exceptions to this um, obviously exist, but I think as Graham Day reminded us, uh, there is a great deal still left to do. Uh, Mark MacDonald in his remarks commented on the diagnostic uh, problems. I'd maybe uh, spend a bit of time on that uh, as well. According to the research uh, under the Scottish Strategy for Autism, uh, a child uh, waiting from referral to receiving a diagnosis averages uh, around 331 days, with some waiting almost 2,000 days. Uh, for adults, uh, the wait is, is less at 162 days, with some uh, still waiting uh, 500 or so days. Uh, and these are figures that don't actually account for parts of Scotland where there is no adult diagnostic service uh, available. Um, and even where the diagnosis is made, um, the, the, the figures from the Count Us In uh, campaign report suggest that there are still pr um, problems uh, involved, almost half uh, suggesting the process is highly stressful, uh, a quarter find that they're misdiagnosed. But many, and, and this was a figure that Mr Macdonald referred to, but many talk of the relief uh, they feel once a diagnosis is received. And, um, this enables access to support, of course, but I've certainly uh, met uh, those uh, who've had a diagnosis uh, who were simply looking for that as an answer. It's not necessarily that they're seeking additional support. It's just knowing that this uh, has been confirmed uh, by uh, relevant professionals. In Orkney, I'm aware of, of difficulties in getting that uh, referral. Um, it, it's caused huge stress and distress to those affected. Um, I welcome the commitment from the Chief Executive of National, uh, NHS Orkney to improve these pathways. Thanks largely, it has to be said, to the heroic campaigning efforts uh, of Chris McGill, and I hope this will deliver real benefits uh, going forward. So there's a hope uh, for World Autism Awareness uh, Day. I think we need to address the fact that there is still a lack of public understanding and awareness, and this does feed into a fear or experience of bullying and, and harassment in all too many uh, uh, occasions and communities. World Autism Awareness Day does provide us with an opportunity not only to reflect on the needs of people with autism, but to celebrate their contribution as well and commit ourselves uh, to ensuring that others have the chance to do likewise. Uh, cinemas and theatres uh, are, are, are uh, marking uh, the occasion with special screenings and performances. Businesses such as Toys R Us have been mentioned uh, in holding autism-friendly promotions. Simple steps such as reducing lighting, improving signage, making staff autism aware enable places to become more accessible for those with autism. With my uh, corporate body hat on, Deputy Presiding Officer, I too am delighted uh, with the award uh, to the Scottish Parliament, uh, I, I, the first public building to be awarded in Scotland, the Autism Access Award, and again put on record uh, my gratitude to the staff for their efforts and commitment. Uh, and on that message of hope on uh, Autism Awareness Day, again, can I congratulate Mark Macdonald for securing this debate and for his stalwart efforts on behalf of those in Scotland whose lives are touched by autism. Many thanks. And I now call Nigel Dawn.
Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And again, I'd like to thank Mark McDonald for bringing this debate. It's a hugely important issue. And I'd also like to take the opportunity of congratulating the parliamentary staff on the good work that they have done. Uh, I find it absolutely no surprise. I've always been extremely impressed by the staff in this place. It comes as no surprise to me that they've taken this uh, and grasped it. Uh, I'd like, Presiding Officer, at this stage of the debate, just to pass a few re personal reflections and then uh, make a few comments about constituency cases, which I hope will inform the debate. Um, I, I have no family experience of autism, but as a piano teacher in, a, in what feels like a very much a, a former existence now, I had one pupil who was an extremely bright lad, but clearly had some of those very recognizable difficulties in communication and comprehension. But he was a wonderful musician. He could play by ear. There were things I, there was no way I could teach him. He could do them better than I could do. Um, but curiously, he struggled, as I suspect, uh, I'm not surprised now to realize, with some of the inaccuracies of musical notation. You might think it's a wonderfully precise science, these dots and dashes, but actually a lot of it is very imprecise. Uh, and he struggled to realize quite when I was telling him, don't worry about precisely what's there, just play it musically. Uh, constituents' cases, and, and I've had a few. Um, can I say, first of all, that the cases that I'm referring to, there's been no shortage of parental engagement. So it's very clear that this is the system rather than the particular family environment. And I'd like to raise three general issues. I'm not going to name anybody, of course. Um, there was one instance of a, of a young man who was looking beyond school age for fairly secure and protective environment. Um, and the difficulty was that there was nothing local. And... He was being told, and his parents were being told, that he would have to go the other side of Glasgow. Now, for those of us who start fairly close to Aberdeen, that really is quite some distance away, socially. Not perhaps a huge number of miles, uh, but a very long way in terms of the family. When I contacted the government about this, I was told that it was a local authority's responsibility, which I'm sure is absolutely right, but it's not difficult to see that maybe some joined up local authority activity would be sensible across the country because of course these kind of protected and secure environments we won't need very many of them across Scotland so it might be that some government guidance there would be helpful please. Speaking uh, in another case I'm coming to the view that there are quite a number of young men again just coming out of school years who struggle to get on either to a voluntary situation or into work and may well become shut in, is the term that's been used, whereby they essentially retreat to home and often to the bedroom and are very difficult to get out. The difficulty, as it's explained to me here, is that whilst the government provides funding, very welcome funding, which is good at getting these young folk from a voluntary activity situation into employment, that funding appears not to be available to get them from the shut-inness into that outgoing voluntary activity. Now, I'm assuming that my information is right. To the extent that that is the case, Minister, then I think I'm merely putting to you that maybe that is something the government might like to look at. And I'd also like to pick up on the point which others have mentioned, um, which is that in many places there doesn't really seem to be much prospect of an adult actually being diagnosed. I think that's, to, to, to put it more bluntly than some might, uh, we often have bright folk, high achieving graduates, but who have social difficulties which are not going to be diagnosed as being on the autism spectrum. And because they really don't tick any of the other social work or welfare boxes, then they don't get some of the help which they could certainly use, which would be very useful to them, and which might well help them not to develop some of the mental illnesses, which will subsequently bring them back into the system. Plainly, that won't help them, but it will also cost us more in the long term. So I wonder whether the government has got its eye entirely on some of this long-term planning uh, and long-term pathways for those who, who uh, struggle with autism. Um, that's my brief input. I'm sure the minister will know a lot more about it. Um, I think it would be good to know that we're collectively trying to do the best for those who are on the autism spectrum so that we get the best long-term solutions for them because at the end of the day, as with all people with a disability, those with autism are above all people and need to be supported as such. Thank you. Many thanks.
And can I now call on Fiona MacLeod to respond to the, the debate, please, Minister, around seven minutes. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I begin, as with all my other colleagues in the Chamber, in congratulating Mark MacDonald on securing today's debate and to thank the cross-party members for supporting the motion and also for the cross-party speakers today on their reflective contributions. But I think I should also point out that um, Mr MacDonald has failed to blow his own trumpet because just this week, um, in recognition of the work that Mark does on this subject, he has been invited to become a member of the National, of the National Autistic Society Scotland's advisory board. Can I congratulate him on that? And can I wish him well and all the hard work that I know that that will entail? Um, we've talked very much about the autism strategy today, and I just wanted to take the opportunity. Um, the Scottish strategy for autism is now in its third year. It was launched in 2011 with a £13.4 million fund, 26 recommendations and a 10-year outlook, and is trying to achieve that. And I'd just like to take the opportunity today to reinforce the Scottish Government's commitment to, through the strategy, improving the lives of people with autism and also to highlight some of the key activities that have, taken, that have been taken forward under the strategy. Raising awareness of autism is a key strategy priority because this will help to ensure that people with autism are treated with fairness and respect, as all of us should be. The strategy also includes building capacity and awareness within autism services so that people receive an integrated service which is responsive to their needs. And I think that integrated service is, is actually a, you know, an answer to a lot of the constituency problems that some of the members have raised uh, this, this evening. A major piece of work is underway to roll out a new and comprehensive training framework to NHS staff. This has been developed by NHS Education for Scotland with the active participation of people with autism and autism professionals. And I think that's incredibly important. If we're to understand in our training uh, how to help folk with autism, then we have to listen to people with autism when they tell us what training our professionals need. This training offers responsive, responsive training based on the skills and knowledge required at different operational levels of the health professionals thought it was really interesting when I read about it. It's training for health professionals from those who occasionally encounter a person with autism, perhaps the receptionist in a GP surgery, all the way up to those who are providing highly specialised support for people with autism. This is a highly significant piece of work and I would encourage NHS boards to consider how it could be utilised effectively. Another um, strategy funded uh, training opportunity that we've had is over the last three years there's been free training through the Open University and through Strathclyde University, not just for those working with people with autism, but for families and just folk that are interested in knowing how to help folk with autism. And over the three years that this OU and Strathclyde University free training has been running, it's been oversubscribed every time. So I think that perhaps tells us that there's a lot of people out there that actually understand that they need to be doing something and working with folk with autism. Certainly. Very brief. Dennis Robertson. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Uh, it, it just struck me, uh, Minister, uh, as you were speaking there, I, I wonder if there's the same um, uh, awareness and training at our dental schools, because I was just thinking at a dental practice where there are bright lights and noise and obviously uh, very sort of tactile invasion sometimes. I'm just wondering if our uh, uh, people at dent uh, dental school and our dentists have been made aware of people with autism and the, their particular needs. Minister. Um, the, the training that I referred to earlier that's been developed by NHS Education for Scotland is for all NHS staff. So I would encourage um, dental practices to take part in that. I think it's important that we look at um, working within the autism um, community to capacity build and I just wanted to give a mention to a local organisation in my constituency called Aspire which works with young people with autism, brings them together. I've been along a couple of times and it's amazing to see these young people uh, getting the, the confidence to go out and do more 
as a group or as individuals. Such a hard thing for folk with autism to do. Can I take this opportunity? Nanette Milne man mentioned the, the six one-stop <coughs> shops that the strategy had funded with one point million pounds. And one of the lovely things that you're able to do as a minister is I'm able to take this opportunity to announce this evening a further £653,305 to support the six one-stop shops to continue for another year. I realise I'm rapidly running out of time. I wanted to talk about the Autism Toolbox. Um, a lot of uh, people have mentioned it, and I think it is so important. It, education is so important to everybody, and through the Autism Toolbox and the accompanying website, we should be able to make sure that we help support pupils with autism. And I am absolutely convinced that the approach of the toolbox could lead to significant improvements in autism educational provisions. Like Graham Day, Nigel Dawn, my constituency surgeries are often taken up with parents coming worrying about their, their young children uh, with autism. And I do hope that the, the use of the autism toolbox will ensure that less people will have to come to me and other MSPs. Can I quickly mention uh, Mark McDonald's campaigning work on relaxed performances, absolutely fantastic and lovely to hear from Nanette Milne about uh, Toys R Us. If anybody should be autism friendly, it should be uh, a, a shop that sells um, toys for kids. But to, to let uh, Graham Day know that I've also heard about autism friendly swimming sessions. Uh, which is another step forward. Autism friendly Aberdeen, Mr Macdonald, I think that's wonderful. Scotland's already a fair trade nation. I hope we can move towards being an autism friendly nation and it's not just Aberdeen. Um, can I add my congratulations and thanks to the staff of the Parliament on uh, being the first public body to receive the Autism Access Award. Employment, Malcolm Chisholm mentioned that only 15% of people with autism are in full-time employment and it's fitting that the theme of this year's World Autism Awareness Day is employment, the autism advantage. Increasing employment opportunities for people with autism is a key priority of the strategy. There's a number of strategy funded projects which have focused on employment, such as Project Search with the City of Edinburgh Council, Into Work and also I Work For Me, supporting self-employed people with autism. In conclusion, presiding officer, there's so much more I could have said, but I'm delighted to see so much positive work ongoing to improve the lives of people with autism. I particularly welcome the ongoing investment in new resources such as the Autism Toolkit, and I applaud the efforts of all concerned with removing barriers to public facilities to allow fair and equal access for all, including accessible entertainment. And I appreciate that those who are working hard to ensure that all members of society have equal employment opportunities and feel valued, because it's the aim of this government to lead the way in creating a fairer society, which not only encourages active participation in that society, but also creates opportunities for everyone to create to Scotland's economic success so that we can enjoy the fruits of our hard work and make Scotland a better place for us all and a place we can all feel proud of. Thank you. Many thanks, Minister. And that concludes Mark Macdonald's debate, Making Scotland Autism Friendly. And I now close this meeting of Parliament.